Welcome to my course on Genome Editing and Engineering. We are going to discuss about basics of zinc finger nucleases today. So, we will be first learning about some of the basic things which are important for this uh, lecture. We will learn about the central dogma, the protein structures and how proteins uh, bind to DNA. Then we will be discussing about uh, one nucleus called FOC1 nucleus and uh, certain uh, special motifs in uh, proteins called zinc finger domains. So, this figure may be familiar to many of you which depicts the central dogma of molecular biology or central dogma of life where DNA is an information molecule which is copied uh, by RNA. Uh, you can see uh, in this arm uh, by the method of uh, transcription and uh, this RNA is translated into uh, proteins. Uh, also, the DNA replicates uh, on its own or make copies of itself by the process of DNA replication and there are also methods by which RNA may be copied into RNA. But we are not going to discuss much about those molecular mechanisms uh, today. Uh, we are going to uh, use some of the concepts of uh, protein structure important for this uh, lecture. Uh, you know about the primary structure of proteins which are basically linear uh, polymers of amino acids and uh, the secondary structure elements are there known as beta seeds and alpha helix uh, and then the tertiary structure uh, which is basically the overall 3D folding of proteins uh, or the arrangement of the secondary structures. Uh, in space and uh, that makes a protein uh, functional or active. And then you have the quaternary structure uh, which is basically the arrangement of the uh, tertiary uh, structures uh, with respect to one another in three dimensional space. This is one of the landmark papers uh, in science by Linus Pauling, uh, Robert Corey and uh, Branson. Uh, where they described some of the important elements of protein uh, structures. Uh, they they uh, came to a conclusion that linear polypeptide chains uh, in the primary structure fall into regular repeating uh, structure units. And they named these uh, uh, repeating structure units as alpha helix uh, which are basically a spiral arrangement of the amino acids in 3D space and uh, the second structure as uh, beta pleated seeds. The name alpha and beta uh, is due to the order of their uh, discovery and they constitute the elements of protein secondary structure along with other elements like the loops, turns and the hairpins. Let us focus a little bit about the alpha helix and this is very important from the point of view of uh, studying uh, gene finger domains. Uh, alpha helix is the most common type of secondary structural element in proteins. Uh, uh, for every turn uh, in these helix, uh, there are around 3.6 amino acid residues or one residue per 100 degree uh, rotation. These uh, residues uh, translates 1.5 uh, angstrom along the helix axis and giving a vertical distance of around 5. Point uh, 4 angstrom between structurally equivalent atoms in a turn or the pitch is something around uh, 0.5 nanometers. Uh, as you can see this is a rod shaped structure and this rod shaped alpha helix structure is stabilized by hydrogen bonds uh, between NH and CO groups of the main chain. The NH group of an amino acid forms a hydrogen bond with the CO group of the amino acid four residues earlier. So, there is a repeating pattern of I plus 4 to I hydrogen bonding and it is the prominent characteristics of an alpha helix. Next are the beta seeds or beta strands. A beta strand is an element of secondary structure in which the protein chain is nearly linear. Here there is no any rod shaped structure like the alpha helix. So, two or more adjacent beta strands will bind to each other through hydrogen bonding to form a beta seed. These are also called as beta pleated seeds. The participating beta strands are not continuous uh, in the primary uh, sequence and may not necessarily have to be close to one another uh, in the sequence. 
the strains uh, forming a beta seed can be separated in primary structure by long intervening sequences of amino acids that lie outside of the uh, sheet structure. Now, these beta uh, seeds may be arranged in different orientations. One of uh, is the parallel beta seed orientations. Here, all bonded strands have the same end to C direction. As a result, uh, they have to be separated by long sequence stretches. The hydrogen bonds are uh, equally uh, distanced. The figure to the left, uh, you can see the four stranded uh, parallel beta sheet uh, from a protein. So, let us discuss some of the various orientations of the uh, beta pleated seeds. Uh, the first one uh, being the parallel beta seeds. All bonded strands have the same end to C direction. As a result, they have to be separated by long sequence stretches. The hydrogen bonds are also equally distanced. Uh, in the figure uh, in the left, you can see a four stranded beta parallel seed uh, from a protein. The four parallel strands are shown in uh, cartoon format. The hydrogen bones are identified by the dotted lines containing the donor nitrogen and the acceptor uh, oxygens. Then you have uh, the anti parallel beta seeds, and you can see these the direction of the uh, beta strands are uh, opposite to one another, but they are parallel. And uh, here the beta strands run in alternating directions and therefore can be quite close on the primary sequence. The distance between successive hydrogen bond alternates between shorter and longer in this case. And on the right, you can see the figure of a three stranded anti parallel beta seed. Uh, the three anti parallel strands are shown in uh, cartoon format and in the st stick form. Hydrogen bones are identified by the dotted lines connecting the donor nitrogen and acceptor uh, oxygens. Then there is a third uh, type of uh, arrangement which we call as the mixed beta sheet. This is basically a mixture of parallel and anti parallel hydrogen bonding. About 20 percent of all uh, beta seeds are found to be uh, mixed uh, beta seeds. Now we know about the central dogma of molecular biology. You also know about the various uh, secondary structures of uh, uh, protein as well as the tertiary structure and the quaternary structure uh, in brief. Uh, why do we need to know this? Uh, we have to know that uh, DNA is the informational molecule uh, except storing and providing information it cannot act on its own. The work is being carried mostly by proteins and RNA and RNA copies these uh, information from DNA and translates them into the executors or the proteins. And in certain cases, the RNA molecule is also a, a functional uh, 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 molecule. Uh, RNA may have a structural role, RNA may have some kind of uh, catalytic role. But the role uh, which is being played by uh, protein is uh, highly diverse uh, when we compare uh, it with the roles uh, being carried out by RNA. So, RN, uh, for doing all these uh, work, a uh, protein needs to talk to all other molecules uh, inside the cell. A uh, protein has to talk to DNA, it has to talk to RNA. So, protein has to bind to DNA uh, for uh, whether uh, replication to be carried out or transcription to be carried out or any other uh, activity uh, related to uh, DNA. Similarly, proteins also bind to RNA and then carries out uh, translation. And Besides that, proteins also binds to uh, proteins themselves or there are protein-protein uh, interactions. So, uh, proteins uh, are known as the uh, players which drives uh, cellular events uh, by binding to DNA, RNA and uh, proteins themselves. So, we now know that the proteins bind to DNA and RNA. So, there are proteins which we can call as DNA binding proteins. And this study um, uh, has reported that uh, we have roughly around 588 DNA binding proteins. And we have uh, a large uh, number of uh, RNA binding proteins, which is more than double of the DNA binding proteins being 1210 uh, roughly. And there are some proteins, a small set, uh, numbering something around uh, 64 which binds to both uh, DNA and RNA at the same time. So, this study is uh, uh, from uh, the QuickGo uh, database and this is the 
reference which you can uh, consult uh, for knowing more. So, uh, already a little has been told to you about the importance of proteins in driving the cellular events. Now, let us focus on the DNA binding proteins which play a central role in all aspects of genetic activity within an organism such as in transcription, uh, packaging of DNA that we have discussed at length in the introductory classes, then uh, rearrangement of DNA uh, that also has been discussed while studying uh, homologous recombination and uh, and etc. and replication and uh, repair. So, a, a study was carried out uh, to analyze around 240 protein DNA uh, complexes or uh, of DNA binding proteins and all these uh, yielded around 8 different structural uh, functional groups uh, which were classified further into 54 uh, structural families. So, basically uh, these 8 large groups of protein uh, structural functional group are the helix turn helix, the gene coordinating uh, proteins, the zipper types, then other alpha helix and beta sheets, then beta hairpin ribbon, then a miscellaneous group uh, having uh, diverse uh, functions with some commonalities and there is age group the enzymes. Some of the uh, enzymes also fall into the other uh, 6 uh, classes. In this particular lecture, uh, we will focus mostly on two protein structural or functional groups. They are the alpha helix turn helix group and the gene uh, coordinating group. Let us first start with a discussion on the group 1 which is the helix turn helix. So, as you can see there are many helix over here. These are basically the alpha helixes, helices which we discussed in the beginning of this lecture. So, this HTH motif or the helix turn helix motif is a common recognition element in proteins used in transcription regulation and enzymes of prokaryotes and eukaryotes. This is an important point uh, we need to carry forward along with us for the remaining part of the lecture. Here you can see the helix turn helix DNA binding domains in lambda phase CII transcriptional activator. Let us now move on to the next part of this lecture, the FOC1 nucleases. Let us now discuss about uh, the FOC1 nucleases, which are important players in the JFN technology uh, platform. Uh, Flavobacterium okinocoides was first reported by Jobel and Upham in uh, 1944, which is a gram negative non motile and motile. Uh, Rotsepit bacteria. Uh, it occurs in soil and fresh water in a variety of environments. We just discussed about the helix turn helix uh, group, uh, structural functional group. Uh, this particular organism, Flavobacterium uh, osinocoides, produces an endonuclease called FOC1, uh, which is a member of the unusual type 2 class of bipartite restriction endonucleases that recognizes a specific DNA sequence and cleave non-specifically a short distance away from that uh, sequence. This is one of the very important uh, discoveries uh, in this particular field uh, where uh, uh, Hiroyuki and his uh, uh, associate uh, discovered a new restriction endonuclease uh, from Flavobacterium okinocoitis FOC1 and another one from Micrococcus uh, luteus. So, in this paper uh, you can see uh, from the abstract uh, the importance of these two uh, clones uh, which produces these two type of endonucleases, restriction endonucleases and here the FOC1 belongs to a class of uh, restriction endonucleases that recognizes specific but asymmetric nucleotide sequences and introduces staggered cleavages at the pointed positions away from the recognition sequences. So, these are not cutting and recognizing at the same place and they produce 
uh, blunt ends or staggered uh, cleavages. In the discussion of this paper, uh, the authors write about uh, uh, one observation where cloning vector PBR322 does not contain the MLU1 site. Therefore, this enzyme could become a useful tool for gene manipulation. Okay? And they, they, they could not uh, anticipate the potential of FOC1 much uh, and they concluded that FOC1 should be convenient for construction of accurate cleavage maps of DNA because uh, FOC1 cut non-specifically. So, uh, with this, however, uh, the scientific world came to know about the existence of this uh, particular enzyme uh, FOC1 and soon it was uh, forgotten. The discovery was something around sometime around 1981. So, this is the uh, binding uh, sequence of uh, the FOC1 uh, which binds uh, cognate sequence uh, 5 prime GG ATG here and cleaves DNA uh, phosphodiester groups 9 base pairs away here. So, it will bind here and it will uh, cleave here. Uh, on the 5 prime strand and 13 base pairs away on the 3 prime complementary strand and it will give a staggered cut as a result of this uh, reaction. The molecular mass of this enzyme is around 65.4 kilo delton and it contains around 587 uh, amino acids and as already told to you this is a type 2 restriction in endonuclease and it consists of two functionally distinct domains. Uh, number one domain is the N terminal DNA recognition domain and a C terminal DNA cleavage uh, domain. So, the domain uh, which is in the N terminal will bind to this uh, cognate sequence and domain at the C terminal will cleave at the 9 base pairs to 13 base pairs away. Now, cleavage occurs only upon dimerization. Uh, if only one uh, FOC1 uh, enzyme binds to the DNA, uh, it will not cleave. Uh, it needs a partner on the complementary stand as well. So, when the recognition domain is bound to its cognate site and in the presence of magnesium ions. So, these are some of the requirements for this enzyme to function. So, as you can see that uh, it has its uh, two modules, one is the N terminal domain and another is the C terminal domain. The modular nature of FOC1 has led to the development of artificial enzymes with new specificities which we are going to study at length in the next lecture and a uh, little bit of uh, that in this lecture too. Now, this is one of the important work uh, carried out by Sandha Sekharan uh, and, and his uh, uh, colleagues and they published their results uh, uh, in 1982, uh, where they identified the functional domains of FOC1 uh, restriction endonucleases. So, their study uh, uh, proved the presence of two separate protein domains within this enzyme, uh, which we have already discussed. One is for the site specific recognition and another one for the endonuclease activity. So, this recognition domain uh, as you can see may have uh, several subdomains D1, D2 and D3 and uh, there is a cleavage domain in the N terminus. And this is uh, connected uh, through a uh, linker molecule uh, as shown in this uh, particular uh, picture. Cartoon. The FOC1 exists as a monomer and first binds to DNA as a monomer. This complex is uh, catalytically uh, inactive. So, first time uh, this particular monomer uh, will bind to a, uh, a DNA strand okay, uh, as a monomer and then another FOC1 will bind on the other strand later. Structure of the FOC1 dimer. Dimerization is uh, mediated uh, 
uh, by the parallel helices alpha 4 and alpha 5 of the cleavage domain. There are no significant interactions between the uh, D 1 subdomains despite the appearance of SAS in this orientation of these structures. So, they remain uh, further away from one another and they do not have any role in this dimerization, but the domains uh, the alpha helices 4 and 5 in this cleavage domain uh, play a major role. A FOC1 monomer first binds DNA at its recognition site, then a second FOC1 molecule bound to another recognition site would dimerize with the first molecule through their cleavage domains. The catalytic domain of each FOC1 molecule swings away from the recognition domain to position its catalytic sites opposite to the targeted phosphodiester bond and catalyzes cleavage at the first site. After cleavage, the two FOC1 molecules dissociate uh, from the DNA. As already told to you, the dimerization is primarily mediated through parallel helices alpha 4 and alpha 5 and two loops P1 and P2 uh, of the cleavage domain. The two alpha 4 helices are roughly perpendicular to each other and together the two helices make up the core of the dimer interface. The residue ASP483 of alpha 4 makes bidented hydrogen bones with uh, ARG487 of alpha 4 of the other monomer and vice versa. The core is sandwiched between the helix alpha 5 and loops P1 and P2 from each monomer where loop P1 comes between the beta strands beta 1 and beta 2 and loop P2 is at the C terminus of alpha 4. So, let us now move on to another uh, important uh, concept required for the ZFN technology the zinc uh, finger uh, domains. Let us now discuss about the zinc finger uh, domains which are very important for understanding the uh, ZFN technology. Uh, the biological role of uh, uh, zinc uh, in proteins was established in 1940 and it was shown uh, to participate in carbonic anhydrase catalytic activity. Soon it was found that the uh, zinc ions play a unique role not only for CA but also other enzymes uh, catalytic activity. In 1985, uh, the structural role of zinc was proposed for the Genopus Levis transcription factor 3A or TF3A. The Genopus Levis TF3A structure consists of repeating 30 amino acid residues folded around the zinc ion to form a small highly independent domain called a finger. Around 20 to 30 residues form a loop uh, during zinc binding to conserved cysteine and histidine residues while the other 5 uh, residues form linkers uh, between uh, conjugative uh, fingers. Moreover, for each repeat the spatial conserved pattern with 3 conserved hydrophobic amino acids uh, tyrosine 6, phenylalanine 17 and leucine 23, 3 was also uh, reported. Let us focus on uh, some of the features of uh, zinc coordinating uh, proteins. Uh, the beta, beta, alpha zinc finger proteins together form the largest individual family in the group. There are over a thousand plus uh, distinct sequence motifs which acts as uh, transcription factors. The structure of a typical zinc finger includes a short two stranded anti parallel beta seat and an alpha helix. So, you can see here the beta seats are anti parallel and it has a uh, alpha helix over here. Two pairs of conserved histidine and cysteine residues in the helix and beta strand coordinate a single uh, zinc ion. Zinc fingers are encoded by approximately 3 percent of the human uh, proteome and are the most common DNA binding motif in eukaryotes. Transcription factors often use uh, zinc fingers to mediate protein DNA uh, interactions. Krishna and uh, associates classified all uh, zinc fingers into uh, eightfold groups and uh, you can see here the uh, eight different uh, fold groups over here and having given different names 
the C2 H2 like uh, finger, gag knuckle, treble clef, a jink bone and so on. Uh, among these you can have many family members for each uh, full group. Uh, for example, uh, two of the family members that we have mentioned here are the C2 H2 finger family, IAP domain family and in the gig knuckle you can see a couple of families being listed over here and accordingly also in the treble clef you have the ring finger like protein kinase cysteine type domains and so on. Amongst all these eight folds, the C2 H2 like uh, finger, uh, the treble clef uh, finger and the jink ribbon finger uh, constitute the majority of the jink fingers available in the uh, biological world. These jink fingers were first identified uh, in a study of uh, transcription in the African clawed frog Genopus levis as already told to you earlier uh, in the laboratory of uh, Aaron Klug and this is the uh, landmark paper uh, Aaron Klug and his uh, co-workers uh, Miller McLachlan uh, published uh, in, in the EMBO journal in 1985. Uh, uh, you can refer to this paper for full details of this particular discovery. Uh, briefly, in this paper, a study of the transcription of a targeted RNA sequence revealed that the binding strength of a small transcription factor uh, TF3A was due to the presence of gene coordinating finger like structures. To know about these gene coordinating finger like structures, amino acid sequencing was done and the amino acid sequencing of this particular TF3A factor revealed 9 tandem sequences of 30 amino acids including 2 invariant pairs of cysteine and histidine residue. Interestingly, uh, uh, in this work, they did not use use uh, much of uh, computational uh, uh, power and these repeating motifs were detected by uh, the eye, scanning by the eye and not by computer analysis. So, it is very important to uh, know some of the discoveries being done in, in very uh, simple ways and these are the words uh, of Aaron Klug. So, I should however emphasize that the repeating structure was discovered through biochemistry and, at, and, no, and not as some reviews have stated by computer sequence analysis. When the sequence was published, I looked for and found by I a repeating pattern which was then confirmed and aligned as a motif of 30 amino acids by Andrew uh, McLellan's uh, computer analysis. C2H2 uh, finger uh, family. So, you have uh, 2 cysteine and 2 cysteine, uh, histidine uh, uh, as, as uh, signature amino acids in these uh, particular families and since its discovery uh, in the Genopus Levy's transcription factor 3A, the C2H2 zinc finger motif uh, also referred to as the classic zinc finger has been found to be present in many transcription factors and in other DNA binding proteins which recognize specific sequences of uh, DNA. A typical C2H2 gene finger contains a uh, repeated uh, 20 to 30 amino acid uh, sequences including two conserved cysteine and two conserved histidine uh, residues, but other combinations of uh, cysteine and histidine uh, is uh, possible. Uh, for example, in gene chelating uh, uh, as, as gene chelating residues. Uh, the regulation of the transcription seems to be the most important task uh, performed by the C2H2 gene uh, fingers. Uh, however, uh, recent studies have suggested their roles in mediating protein-protein uh, uh, interactions uh, as well. So, we now know that uh, in Genopus levis, uh, they had uh, found around 30 amino acid residues, uh, uh, but uh, further studies reveal that uh, their C2H2 domain uh, has a range of around 28 to 30 amino acids 
and uh, these C2H2 domains include uh, certain uh, secondary structure elements a, a beta hairpin which comprise of antiparallel beta sheets consisting of two uh, beta strands. So, two beta strands uh, in antiparallel orientation give rise to a beta hairpin and which is a important component of this classical C2H2 domain. Then it has in addition to this an alpha helix uh, and together uh, they form a left handed beta beta alpha structure, two beta coming from here and one alpha coming from here and the beta hairpin and the alpha helix. The zinc finger structure is stabilized by coordination of a zinc at atom with two conserved cysteine residues at one end of the beta sheet and with two conserved histidine residues at the alpha helix uh, C terminus. Not only the cysteine and histidine pairs are conserved, there is a highly conserved hydrophobic core uh, forming uh, the alpha helix. The other amino acid residues in C2H2 domains are largely variable. In all cases, zinc ion plays a structural role and does not interact directly with the DNA. The alpha helix serves as the recognition element inserting into the uh, DNA major groove whereas side chains form specific contacts with three consecutive base pairs. The overall interaction is further stabilized by non-specific contacts between the beta sheet and the sugar phosphate backbone of uh, DNA. The zinc finger domains are the among the most structurally diverse uh, protein domains. They interact with nucleic acids other proteins and lipids to facilitate a multitude of biological processes. Uh, zinc fingers are categorized into various classes and have various architectures, metal binding modes, functions and uh, reactivity. So, here you can see uh, the structure of C2H2 zinc finger and the zinc ion which is uh, shown in green is uh, coordinated by two uh, histidine and two cysteine amino acid residues uh, about which we have discussed in the uh, previous slide. The versatility, selectivity and stability of these short amino acid sequences uh, is achieved mainly by uh, three things, residue participating in gene coordination uh, mostly by cysteine, cysteine and uh, histidine, then hydrophobic core and uh, ZF structure formation and variable residues responsible for inter and intramolecular uh, interactions. So, this is the term rule uh, which you may remember uh, to understand the zinc coordination. Uh, if you uh, put your wrist in this orientation with the thumbs up, then in this side you have the two cysteine residues and in on these two fingers you have the uh, zinc residues and in your palm below the thumb uh, you have the uh, zinc uh, uh, molecule and this is how they bind and stabilize the ZF uh, structure. Sequence alignments of the C2H2 zinc fingers and other studies have revealed that the residues that are responsible for the uh, hydrophobic core formation in most uh, C2H2 zinc fingers are uh, L7, uh, F11 and L2 and this is a semantic of C2H2 zinc finger domain primary structure uh, with the bones coordinating the zinc ions and a drawing of hand and uh, finger background. Uh, uh, the cysteine and histine are the coordinating uh, residues respectively. A canonical uh, zinc finger module consists of uh, two antiparallel uh, beta strands and an alpha helix with a zinc ion coordinated by the conserved cysteine and histidine uh, residue pairs. Uh, various amino acid residues at positions relative to the amino terminal end of the alpha helix form important base specific contacts in the major groove of the double stranded target uh, on DNA. The zinc finger domain is one of the most frequently utilized DNA binding motif found in eukaryotic uh, transcription uh, factors as well. The finding of a zinc 
the binding of a zinc finger domain to its target site juxtaposes three base pairs on DNA uh, to a few amino acids in the alpha helix structure. The identity of the amino acids at the contact site defines the DNA sequence recognition specificity of the uh, zinc fingers. So, you have here three fingers, uh, finger 1, 2, 3 and you have some uh, cognate uh, sequences uh, which are uh, in the DNA. So, basically a ZFP consisting of three uh, link uh, ZF uh, modules are being shown in this carton and uh, it binds its target DNA site with amino acids of the recognition alpha helices in the N to C terminal direction contacting consecutive nucleotides in DNA running in the 3 prime to uh, 5 prime directions. This can sometimes lead to confusion because the DNA target site is typically referred uh, in the other direction uh, which is the 5 prime to uh, 3 prime direction. Let us now discuss how the proteins uh, recognize uh, DNA sequences and bind to them. Uh, the DNA binding proteins recognize DNA sequence with at least two different binding modes, specific and non-specific modes. DNA binding proteins would initiate gene transcriptional regulation by searching for their target DNA sites among an overwhelming number of non-specific DNA sequences uh, in the nucleus. Uh, uh, theoretically, uh, the protein first binds non-specifically to any given sequence of uh, DNA and then rapidly searches the sequence uh, for the presence of specific binding uh, sites. In doing so, uh, it, it sometimes uh, uh, would move uh, along the uh, DNA strand uh, to find for its cognate sequences. So, uh, briefly the protein DNA recognition involves uh, at least two steps. The first uh, step is the non-specific binding. Uh, the protein would uh, bind to any uh, given uh, sequence of DNA uh, without bordering for the target or the cognate uh, sequence. So, firstly the DNA binds to any available DNA sequence to form a non-specific protein DNA complex. And mm, in this non-specific uh, reaction, uh, the uh, electrostatic interactions are the important dominating uh, uh, factors. Uh, later on, uh, it gradually would uh, shift towards a specific binding. So, following non-specific binding, a protein will slide along the DNA backbone looking for its uh, cognate sequence. In this process, the protein interacting residues can switch roles from a purely electrostatic interaction with the DNA backbone in the non-specific complex to a highly specific binding mode with the base pairs of the uh, cognate sequence. So, here is a model of the site specific DNA recognition by C2H2 zinc finger domains. So, in figure A, uh, you can see uh, a crystal structure of three zinc fingers uh, 1, uh, 2, and uh, 3, and this is the DNA molecule in the center. The amino acids involved in the site specific DNA recognition are uh, color coded. Uh, uh, minus 1 is green and my, uh, plus 2 is blue, plus 3 is red and plus uh, 6 is uh, purple. On the corresponding panel figure B is a model of the site specific DNA recognition by alpha helical uh, amino acids. A model of the site specific DNA recognition by C2H2 uh, finger domains uh, is being shown in this uh, figure. Uh, figure A you can see the crystal structure of three zinc fingers of the GIF 268 protein bound to uh, DNA. So, the amino acids involved in the site specific DNA recognition are color coded uh, minus 1 green plus 2 blue plus 3 red and plus 6 uh, purple and th these are the three uh, zinc fingers uh, which are uh, binding to the DNA molecule uh, in the center. 
In panel B, you can see a model of site specific DNA recognition by alpha helical uh, amino acids. So, uh, here you can see uh, plus 6 uh, corresponding to 1, plus 2 corresponding to 2, plus 2 corresponding to 3 and uh, 4 and plus minus 1 corresponding to uh, 3. So, we will discuss uh, about this uh, relationship in a later slide. So, this is uh, one of the uh, important uh, paper uh, in finding out how zinc fingers recognize uh, DNA molecule and this work by uh, Pavletic and Pabo uh, were the first uh, to determine the crystal structure of a complex of DNA with three tandem uh, C2H2 domains of the mammalian ZIF-268 uh, proteins. The three uh, gene fingers were found to form a uh, semicircle uh, located in the major uh, DNA groove. So, in this complex as you can see in their abstract, the gene fingers bind in the major groove of beta DNA and wrap partway around the double helix. Each finger has a similar relation to the DNA and makes its primary context in a three base pair subsite. Residues from the amino terminal portion of an alpha helix contact the bases and most of the contacts are made with the guanine rich strands of the DNA. And their work provided a framework for understanding how zinc fingers recognize DNA and suggest that this motif may be useful basis for the design of novel uh, DNA binding uh, proteins. So, each of the three C2H2 domains bind to three or four DNA nucleotides via amino acids at the same alpha helical uh, position. So, these amino acids positions are in the alpha helix. So, they are in the positions minus 1, plus 2, uh, plus 3 and plus 6 and uh, these are the positions of the DNA nucleotides uh, in the in the forward strand and in the reverse strand as you can see 5 prime and this is the type uh, 3 prime. So, arginine at uh, position uh, minus 1 as well as the amino acid residues at uh, position 2, 3 and 6 respectively take part in this interaction. The biochemical and structural studies of these C2H2 domains confirm the key role of the amino acid at these positions for the specific binding to DNA and there is a canonical model uh, which suggests that the amino acids at the positions 6, 3 and 1 are responsible for recognition of the first, second and third nucleotides at the 5 prime end or the forward uh, strand uh, of the DNA respectively and the sorry uh, these uh, 6, 3 and minus 1 are responsible for binding to 1, 2 and 3 nucleotides uh, in, in, the, in the forward strand or the 5 prime strand uh, and the amino acid at the second position binds to the fourth nucleotides on the uh, complementary strand. So, this is uh, very important to uh, remember uh, how the gene fingers or C2H2 domains bind to a double stranded DNA molecule. It is not just the three bases on the fourth strand a fourth base also sometimes play an important role and this fourth base is interacted by the second uh, amino acid residue. Now, we uh, studied about uh, the binding modes, how it starts with a non-specific binding in the beginning and then it uh, the, the uh, complex slit slides along the DNA molecule and then uh, upon fi finding its cognate partner, uh, it, it transforms into a more uh, specific uh, binding interaction. 
So, this is a proposed uh, sequential binding scheme of three uh, cis2, his2, jing finger domain or TJD uh, bound to the cognate uh, DNA and this work uh, was carrying out uh, in the testis uh, jing finger uh, protein domain and you can refer to this paper to understand in details uh, how this work was uh, carried out. Now, uh, let us uh, look into these uh, figures. So, these are the jing finger 1, jing finger 2 and zinc finger 3 and as discussed all uh, earlier they are wrapping the DNA molecule in a uh, semi circle uh, as you can see over here. So, in this uh, TJD DNA complex the cognate DNA uh, represented by cartoon with the phosphate backbone in yellow here and the bases inside in violet okay? and they are inside uh, this uh, molecule. TJD is also represented uh, by a cartoon with the helix and surface mesh of zinc fingers 1, 2 and 3 uh, shown in green, blue and red respectively. The beta sheet in each finger is uh, omitted in this case uh, for uh, clarity. So, initially uh, the C2 H2 jing fingers bind to the DNA in a, a non specific uh, manner, and then uh, you can see that uh, jing fingers 1 and 2 are uh, gradually trying to interact uh, with the uh, basis uh, in, in, in the center uh, to find out its uh, cognate. Uh, sequence and this uh, type of condition is known as the semi specific binding state. Now, this will uh, keep on occurring um, until and unless uh, the uh, protein molecule find its uh, cognate sequence. So, it, it always attempts to uh, find out uh, by reading or interacting with the uh, bases in the core its uh, cognate sequence and if it fails to find it, so it will uh, slid uh, to a next location and try to read it. And this goes on and on until uh, it will find its cognate sequence and whenever that cognate sequence uh, is being found, it changes to the specific binding already discussed to you. So, you can see that this is not a very simple reaction, it is quite uh, uh, dynamic and it is a heat and trial. Uh, effort or method after which a, a jing finger uh, finds its uh, cognate DNA sequence. So, in the TJD DNA complex, the cognate DNA is represented by a cartoon uh, as already uh, told to you. Uh, initially, the TJD interacts with the cognate DNA in a non specific binding. The fingers want to uh, switch from non specific binding to semi specific binding with finger 1 almost fitting into the major groove completely but finger 2 not fitting. Finally, the semi specific binding is improved by the non specific binding on finger 3 and the DNA binding is then transformed to the specific mode with fingers 1 and 2 fitting into the major groove completely, but finger 3 binding uh, non specifically uh, uh, to the uh, DNA. So, we now come to end of the uh, discussion on uh, the basics of uh, jing finger uh, proteins. Uh, as well as other proteins uh, like uh, FOC1 and together uh, they are the important concepts for the jing finger nuclease uh, technology. So, now we know that uh, the jing fingers binds to uh, DNA uh, cognate uh, sequences. By changing these uh, amino acids, a high degree of selectivity can be achieved uh, toward a given three base pair uh, DNA sequence. And exploiting this recognition mechanism, uh, protein modules containing multiple jing finger motifs, each one recognizing a specific three base pair DNA sequence, have been engineered, which bind to specific uh, DNA sequences. And uh, fusing these uh, recognition 
uh, module uh, which is sequence independent uh, endonuclease or DNA cutter uh, was the first successful strategy to introduce BRICS at specific sites of uh, genomic DNA. And uh, we have studied in detail about the double strand uh, DNA breaks and how those are helpful in homologous recombination and other uh, mutational uh, events. So, in the next lecture, we are going to discuss at length about utilizing these basic concepts uh, in, in the development of uh, gene finger uh, nucleases. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm.